Hello, I am Pamela Harrison from Intel. We help customers optimize their applications with Intel profiling tools. Optimization is critical in real-time rendering applications. Knowing where bottlenecks are and what their severity is guides you, the game developer, in improving your game's frame rate with the least possible time and effort. We want to help you learn how to use the free tool Intel GPA to quickly find and root cause bottlenecks in your games so that you can get the most performance gain for your effort. I will give you a brief introduction to our Graphics Performance Analyzers tool suite. Then I will take you through a use case where a small gaming studio more than tripled their frame rate in a troublesome part of their game with the help of GPA. They used our signature tool, Graphics Frame Analyzer, to find what was slowing their gameplay so that they knew what to optimize. After I tell you about Intel GPA, which is primarily focused on GPU profiling, Jennifer DiMatteo, my colleague who is a VTune profiler expert, will show you how you can use VTune to find troublesome CPU bottlenecks by exploring threading and memory usage. Let's start with Intel Graphics Performance Analyzers, a tool suite that works across various platforms to help you find the bottlenecks in your games. Quickly and easily find the worst bottlenecks so that you know you are getting the most out of your optimization time and effort. So what does GPA consist of? System Analyzer, which allows you to connect to an application and not only monitor real-time metrics, but also experiment real-time by doing such things as overriding states. You can trigger captures during this live analysis while playing your game. Graphics Trace Analyzer is our GPU-CPU workload visualization tool. It allows you to see GPU and CPU activity in parallel, which lets you spot difficult CPU-GPU interaction issues or discover if you are CPU or GPU bound. Finally, our signature tool, Graphics Frame Analyzer. This tool is a powerful frame analysis tool. You can capture frames from your game, inspect all aspects of them, and find performance issues at the individual draw call level with geometry and other resource visualizations. You can analyze the captures and share them with colleagues. You can even replay them on other platforms to compare frame rate. We also have our CLI tool, Intel GPA Framework, that is the back end to Graphics Frame Analyzer and is available as a separate download. It provides users access to Intel GPA's capture and playback functionality at different levels and allows you to automate parts of your profiling process through scripting. Performance is key. You know that. Higher performance allows your game to run smoothly on your target platforms. But if you are able to increase performance, you can add more features, improve visual quality, or expand to other platforms, giving you a bigger market. That's what profiling helps you achieve. In a moment, I will show you what we did with Soma Games. They were working on the Scout chapter of the Lost Legends of Redwall. They were targeting high-end gaming platforms and were getting 50 frames per second, but wanted to add more features, so they were concerned about frame rate drop. Using GPA's Graphics Frame Analyzer, they quickly found the bottlenecks that were most important to work on. And in three weeks, as you can see in the slide, the fixes they made brought them up to more than triple the frame rate on high-end platforms and more than five times the frame rate on mid-range platforms. I want to stress that GPA works across platforms. Soma Games captured frames on a non-Intel GPU and then profiled on an Intel processor. We don't guarantee GPA tools will work on all non-Intel platforms, but we test several of them, hoping you all can target as many platforms as possible. I will show you how GPA's Graphics Frame Analyzer made it easy for the Soma Games developers to see what they should focus on. When we started working with them, they had heard of GPA but had never used it. They had been using the Unity Profiler and didn't realize how powerful GPA is. We met with them one hour per week for three weeks to help them find their bottlenecks with Intel GPA. Between meetings, they optimized their game based on what GPA showed them. We did this collaboration in November of 2021, before most of these platforms were available. You can see several things here. First, if you look at the table top to bottom, you can see the progress made over the three weeks of work. Second, if you look left to right, you can see the improvement of Intel's integrated GPUs from 10th to 13th generation processors. 
And third, at the right end, you can see how our discrete GPU, the ARC A770, performs. And finally, and importantly, as you might guess, you can save the frames you capture over time to do regression testing and see progress. Now let's take a look at what we found and what the Soma Games developers did to address the bottlenecks. First, before opening the original frame, I select the GPU that I want to use for analysis. You don't have to disable the other GPUs. Just choose the one that you want. I will analyze with just my integrated GPU. The frame rates will be higher when analyzing with a discrete graphics card. This frame was captured before any work was done with Graphics Frame Analyzer. We see for this frame that the frame rate is 9 on my 12th generation core processor with no discrete graphics card. So you might think you need to target only high-end platforms. But let's explore. Here in the bar chart, you can see the API calls in order from first to last. Those that are the biggest blocks take the most time. But that shouldn't be what you first focus on. Let's go to Advanced Profiling Mode, where calls are grouped by type and pipeline state. Here you will see the worst issues in the frame on the left, grouped so that you optimize not just the longest call, but rather the hottest bottleneck. You potentially speed up several calls that add up to the most time-consuming issue. When we look at the hottest bottleneck, there on the left, we see the top issue on the bottleneck's list is graphics front end. It turns out they had a lot of vegetation. They were using combined meshes to reduce the number of draw calls. This was a really good idea to ease the load on the CPU. But this affected the geometry transformation stage of the graphics pipeline negatively, causing the GPU to draw each of the elements individually. When they changed the combined meshes to GPU instancing, that reduced the load on the GPU. Opening this bottleneck in the API call list will delineate the different calls that contributed to it. And if you want to see where those draw calls are in the frame, switch back to normal mode. Now you can see that one hot spot stems from more than 90 draw calls, and they are dispersed throughout most of the frame. Now let's look at the next frame, showing the progress in week one after changing from combined meshes to GPU instancing. You can see that the frame is now 19 frames per second, more than double what it was a week before. Going to Advanced Profiling Mode, we see that the Geometry Transformation bottleneck is now insignificant compared to the current bottleneck. Next, we see that Shader Execution is the biggest issue. We might need to poke around a bit, but knowing that there are many fog particles in this scene, we take a look at the geometry. In the post-transform mesh view, there are many, many planes that represent the fog. Changing to screen space view, we see the green and red axes that define screen space. It looks very blurred. When I zoom out, we see that there is a significant amount of fog outside of the screen space. Believe it or not, drawing lots of extra pixels outside the screen is a rather common issue that game developers have without even knowing it. It takes just a few minutes to check this with GPA, and fixing this problem can significantly improve frame rate. Let's take a look at how much that shader issue affected the frame rate. In the next and final frame of this three-week collaboration, we achieved 54 frames per second. So ultimately, Soma Games' hope was rekindled that they can target consoles and other platforms, growing their customer base and now they have integrated GPA into their development cycle. I love this work we did with Soma Games because we can see the before and after so we can track the progress as improvements were made. Before handing off to Jennifer for VTune profiler analysis, let's take a really quick look at a couple of GPA's brand new features in our 2023.1 release. The first is System Analyzer our tool that visualizes both CPU and GPU work. GPA System Analyzer can help on the CPU side, specifically with the loads on the P cores and E cores. These are performance and efficient cores, big and small cores. This two-core type system was introduced on our 12th and 13th generation core processors, formerly codenamed Alder Lake and Raptor Lake. We can look at the distribution of work across the cores. We can see the aggregation of the P cores and the aggregation of the E cores. We can also look at each core individually. 
Adding the frequency tracks, we can see that the P cores have higher frequencies, as they should, because they are the bigger cores. And finally, in our command line tool, Intel GPA Framework, we have added compression. This is great for saving storage space. Graphics Frame Analyzer, the GUI tool you saw in action in this video, will add this compression option in a future release. You can find more information about Intel GPA on our site. Check out our training page for the full interview with Soma Games, as well as quick tip videos and in-depth videos. Now my colleague Jennifer DiMatteo will introduce you to game profiling for CPUs in VTune. Thanks, Pamela. My name is Jennifer DiMatteo, and I'm a technical consulting engineer at Intel. Today I'm going to talk about CPU performance optimization with Intel VTune Profiler. Once you've resolved your graphics bottlenecks with GPA, you may want to identify additional performance problems on the CPU side. These bottlenecks may slow down the transfer of data to the GPU or cause CPU executed functions to perform poorly or inefficiently. So why use the Intel VTune Profiler? VTune was created roughly 20 years ago to help developers make use of new CPU architectures such as multicore. As the hardware capabilities and complexities increase, so do the need for tools like VTune to help understand how software is utilizing those capabilities. VTune does include a very rich set of functionality, and I've narrowed it down to the most common uses for game profiling, from a high-level hotspot analysis to a deep dive into the instruction pipeline. Use VTune when you want to optimize CPU compute-intensive tasks so you know what functions will benefit most from optimization and gain insights into how to do that. Tune CPU threading performance so you can resolve any issues with blocked tasks and improve parallelism. Profile games built with Unity or Unreal Engine. These engines use the VTune instrumentation API so you can view performance of annotated engine tasks. Optimize cache usage, which can improve the speed of CPU instructions. And finally, get best performance on the latest Intel hardware so you can take advantage of cutting edge architectures such as hybrid CPU. This is a high level 30 second slide on VTune profiler features. There are a lot of features not listed, but I've narrowed down the list to those that are most interesting to game developers. In addition to functionality related to CPU and hardware optimization, VTune has broad functionality for both Windows and Linux. It also supports a variety of languages, including managed code like C Sharp, unmanaged C++, or a mix. The instrumentation API is very comprehensive, including both collection control and task and frame markups. Finally, you can download the full version of VTune Profiler for free, with no signups required. With the overview out of the way, I'll now describe the functionality in more detail. Hotspots analysis is generally the first place developers start. It allows you to see which functions are consuming the most CPU time, with metrics that can help indicate what might be causing poor performance. If you are profiling a Unity or Unreal Engine game, you will also see which engine tasks are taking the most time. The summary shows other collection-wide metrics, such as the total number of threads and high-level CPU usage information. In the bottom-up view, you can see additional metrics for each function along with the call stack if you've collected stacks. From this view, you can also double-click on function names to open the source code view and see performance metrics at the source line level. I should point out that there are two ways to collect hotspots and threading. The first is with user mode sampling. This uses OS interrupts and does not collect hardware events. The second is hardware event-based sampling, which allows for more frequent sampling and generally less overhead, but it does require the Intel driver and an Intel CPU. The hotspots collection will also show a timeline view of thread behavior and CPU utilization. If there is a potential threading problem, you can run a detailed threading analysis to get more information about synchronization tasks and context switches. Having a lot of threads doesn't always indicate better performance. There might be a significant amount of overhead. The threading model can also be improved. For example, the threads in the example on the left will stop and wait for the other threads to finish. But a task stealing model, such as Intel's threading building blocks, will allow threads that have completed their work to take over for the longer running threads, allowing the work to finish faster. 
The flame graph view is a relatively new feature, which we added to help visualize the top-down view of the call stack. Now, instead of opening up each function in the top-down tree, you can view the flame graph and see the full stack trace. Different colors are used to differentiate between user, system, and synchronization tasks, so you can quickly see where a synchronization function might be causing a performance problem. This view can be searched and filtered as the other tabs. VTune uses the Intel Instrumentation and Tracing API, which we generally call the ITT API. You can use this to annotate frames and tasks for easier filtering and grouping, and to control the VTune collection. For example, if you only want to profile a particular section of code, you can use the Pause and Resume APIs in your code to tell VTune when to collect. As I've mentioned, Unity and Unreal Engine both use this API to mark up their tasks for better VTune results. You can enable it by doing a development build with debug symbols on your game and then launching the game with the engine's VTune parameter. We have recipes in the VTune cookbook with more details. Microarchitecture analysis allows you to see how the game's code utilizes hardware resources. When you have a function with a high CPI rate, which stands for clock cycles per instruction, that means at a high level it is making poor use of the hardware for one reason or another. I'm not going to explain this in detail, but VTune itself has built-in documentation to help you understand where the problems are. There are two analysis types that show microarchitecture behavior. Memory access analysis is the first I'll talk about. Slow memory loads are among the most common causes of poor instruction performance. This analysis can help you identify which level of cache your functions are bound by and whether memory accesses are causing a performance problem. Microarchitecture exploration is our lowest level of analysis. VTune will flag potential performance issues and provide a short description of why. In the microarchitecture view, you can also see performance details for different core sizes on hybrid CPU platforms. The hardware events collected depend on the CPU architecture, so P-Core and E-Core don't have quite the same set of events and are listed separately. The hybrid CPU architecture is the latest to come out for client platforms. Basically, processors with codename Alder Lake and Raptor Lake have different sized cores, performance cores, and efficient cores. The current version of VTune supports profiling these CPUs for Windows 10 and 11 and Linux distributions. Simply run a hardware event-based hotspot or microarchitecture analysis to see how tasks, functions, and threads are utilizing the different core sizes. This screenshot shows an Unreal Engine render task primarily using the P cores, and the timeline view shows a thread also running primarily on the P cores. With the microarchitecture exploration, you can also see how instructions are performing on the different core types. In the summary, it shows that the P-Core is primarily back-end bound, but the E-Core has a significant amount of front-end issues. You can drill into each of these issues for more details. Another thing related to hybrid CPUs is vectorization and SIMD instructions. I won't get into all the details in this talk, but with VTune you can see event counts related to SIMD instructions. This screenshot shows that there are a number of integer vector add and multiply events with a size of 256. This indicates that 256-bit vector instructions were run on the P-Core, which may help provide a better understanding of how your game uses vectorization. We have some other talks which focus on optimizing hybrid CPU performance, so check those out for more details. To wrap up, VTune has a lot of functionality for CPU profiling. We understand that this can be intimidating for novices or even advanced users, so we are always trying to improve our support and documentation. Thank you for watching our presentation on optimizing games across platforms.